All right, so I think the last video we ended was about three weeks ago, and I believe we said something along the lines of, we're gonna go look at a truck camper tomorrow and we're taking you along. <laughs> so that we did look at a truck camper, but we did not take you along. <laughs> um, and that was because that truck camper was awful. And while I wouldn't have minded filming and sharing that experience with you guys and showing why it was awful, the, <laughs> it it's not the owner but like someone mm -hmm. who worked there the owner was a friend of the person selling the truck camper so I was like mm, I don't think we should bring out the camera and like openly talk a bunch of smack yeah and <laughs> so we're looking for a older used truck camper because a we want to reuse this truck and the payload isn't uh as high as the new trucks. Yes, yeah. some of these new trucks are good, but most of the like new truck campers, you pretty much need a 4500 or higher to even get close to the payload. So, so we're looking for an older one to make mm -hmm. sure that we're still within our safety payload ratings. Mm -hmm. And then secondary, we are uh, looking for an older one because we want to renovate. We're mm -hmm. kind of excited. Mm -hmm. And renovating a smaller space seems a lot more attainable. Yes, much more manageable. So, yep. uh, to bring you up to speed real quick, we actually haven't been like going out and looking at truck campers because we knew what we wanted and we had kind of an, not odd, but we had a, a requirements list. We wanted a side entry. We wanted something with a low payload and bathroom in the rear mm -hmm. so like it's right there and you can use it when you're uh come with all the slides in right and we were open to either one slide or no slides yeah. um but a lot of the ones we were looking at just happened to have one slide and yeah yeah we just we wanted a little more of a functional layout we, you know, once we looked into this, we realized yeah. that truck campers can have quite a few layouts, but the most traditional one I noticed was like the sink was kind of sideways and it faced the back. And so I just wasn't really into that. Yeah. It felt awkward and weird. So yeah, yeah, we had our list of requirements and we've been stalking RV Trader. Jason's been stalking Facebook groups and all that to say we found one. <laughs> And we kept our eye on it for a week or so, and, mm -hmm. then, and then now we, we're here. We decided to pounce. So, in the last two days, we have driven over 900 miles, and we are in New Jersey. <laughs> uh, we actually put a deposit down on this one. We already did a walkthrough, um, a FaceTime walkthrough with one of the salesmen here, and everything looked good, and you know, we told him like, please don't make us drive up there. If you think there's water damage, you think there's an issue, something doesn't work, like just please tell us. And they're just like, our experience so far has been like really straightforward, yeah. you know, no, bones about it just this is what you're getting here's what it is and whoever had this truck camper before really took care of it yeah. so first time looking at it and we're taking yeah. it home unless there's some, some serious damage yeah yeah i mean everything on video looks great and i, mean, I can kind of see it from here and it does look like it's in great condition for being a 2005 2005 so <laughs> yes so we're taking you with us on like our pdi um we're actually kind of going to be doing it a little bit by ourselves which we actually pushed for just because we couldn't pick it up for a few weeks because of their you know it's it's rv in season guys <laughs> there's a lot of rvs still being sold so their schedule their calendar was full for a pickup and a walkthrough with someone and we said we're kind of experienced <laughs> yeah we've got a little bit of uh, experience in our belts we have some rving uh you know <laughs> i think i can figure anything out in any rv that we walk into probably faster than most salesmen right but so they said, okay, well, if you're comfortable with it, like you can do the walkthrough by yourself, but we're still gonna talk to them and, and everything like that. Yep. So I'm excited. Are you excited? Me too. All right, let's go to our walkthrough. All 
right, guys. So we have actually been here for, what, hour and a half? Hour and a half, <laughs> yeah. Um, we wanted to look through it first because we started to film and then it just was getting really awkward of like, oh, wait, hold on, what's this? And you put down the camera and then you look. And anyway, so we figured, okay, let's get our bearings about ourselves and then let's communicate <laughs> what's going on. So we have tested every single appliance. So when you're doing your PDI or looking at any used camper, you know, I mean, this applies to new as well. You want to test everything. So we got this, this particular unit has a 2500 watt generator so we jason got that going yep it didn't start and so then we looked and we're like oh the propane's off yes so jason turned on the propane and then it still wouldn't start so then we actually bled the propane lines um through the stove through the stove yeah. yes so verified the stove was working right i was gonna say two for one so the stove works which is fantastic and it's actually really clean it looks like they barely use the oven which is shocking to me for how old this camper is so then we got the generator running so with that on you can start to test everything else yeah make sure that you test air conditioners heaters even if it's hot or it's cold like it's really cold here so we had to turn the ac down to like 40 <laughs> to get it to turn on but it was blowing cold so yes it works and it works really well i was yeah. another appliance i was blown away with uh heater same thing turned mm -hmm. up turn, started blowing out hot we actually had to turn it off it was getting too warm in here so that's always a good sign definitely um, we tested the microwave microwave yeah so make sure once again test everything yes we tested the different functions of the fridge yes so this one was kind of new to us because this is actually a three-way fridge so ac dc propane yes. <laughs> so we tested it on all three and then what was really interesting is we put it on auto and when we turn the generator off it switched to propane so that's like another functionality you want to test is that if your um, fridge switches you know, if it's on auto, you want it to switch. And looking here, I forgot, we, we don't really talk about it. We bring uh, some tools with us. Uh, this is more for a use, but I mean, once again, all this applies to new as well, because you want to ver verify things with new. So we bring a screwdriver, mm -hmm. it's a big one, and a multimeter uh, for testing electrical. We actually brought um, one of those extendable lighters as well yep. just in case the sparkers weren't working which they yep. were so but that's another thing you might want to bring one thing we did forget is you can actually like just bring a cup of water to test the microwave out if you want to make sure that it's actually like microwaving but i mean we just turned it on and it worked so we weren't too worried about it exactly um that's not one of our uh <laughs> won't buy it because the microwave doesn't work kind of thing right. um but overall we like to for us because we're experienced and hopefully if you're buying a used rv you have watched some of our other videos or read some of our blog posts yes. at getawaycouple.com <laughs> uh, we like to actually look at the other expensive appliances so that's water heater furnace um water pump water pump yeah just get your eyes on these things to look around them is there any leaks or is there anything this unit is winterized so we turn the water pump on and and stuff like that but right. we didn't get and to it, fully test the faucets. We heard the water pump. We heard it pressurize. Yes. That stuff doesn't worry us specifically because I'm more than happy in this truck camper, very small, <laughs> uh, to replace any water line. And there's not that many. So. Yes. So the reason we bring the screwdriver is because if you are in an RV, you probably already know this, but there's a lot of like hidden panels. So case in point, this panel was back here, which covered, you know, the sink and the water lines back there, and we, that's where the hot water tank actually is. So if you take that off. Which is just a few screws. Right, then you can see the hot water tank. So when you're looking at your hot water tank, you wanna look or, you know, around the gaskets, make sure there's no leaks or if it's dripping. You wanna see you know, how well maintained it is. Is there any like water damage down here? Now, when I first got in here, I thought this was water damage because you can also push on the wood, but this isn't water damage. It's actually just not nailed in all the way. So that's super easy fix and let me know that we were okay down here. This is actually the furnace, so you can look around there. 
just see, you know, what, it's just good to get eyes on all this different type of stuff. So then, there we go. <laughs> you want to additionally just literally open every single door. Yeah. I mean, if it latch doesn't work, that's no big deal, but. If you're buying new, notate that stuff down, make right. sure that they get it fixed before delivery. But if you're buying used, then you can just kind of tally Oh, a new slide thing is, I don't know, 10 bucks, or you can even look on Amazon and kind of notate down how much estimated repairs would be. And that can help with negotiating, mm -hmm. or it can help if you've already negotiated and you're taking this unit home, just knowing <laughs> how much you're going to have to spend to fix it. Right, exactly. And so I particularly also like to look around the window frames. That's where you look for water damage. Um, is the wallpaper, you know, or the laminate they use peeling off at all? Do you see any of those dried water streaks, the watermarks? And so I did actually looking at this countertop, because you look at the windows and you look at the counters, and I don't know if you guys can really see it, but it is not smooth. So that tells you that some water got in here and warped, you know, the wood underneath. So we were kind of questioning this window, but we couldn't find any other signs of water damage around that window. But it's just something to note, something to help with negotiations. And frankly, if there was water damage and they fixed it, because the wood isn't soft either. So that tells you, and we know it's been raining up here. So that tells you that there isn't a leak there anymore. And we're also, we want to reno, so we want to replace the counters. So that's actually like not even aesthetically, that's not a big deal to us. Right. Yeah. And so it may be to you, but for us, it's more about, uh, all RVs at some point in their life <laughs> have some water damage somewhere. It's mm -hmm. just finding it and seeing how bad it is. Most water damage, um, if it's taken care of quickly, like leaks and stuff like that can be repaired. And then, mm -hmm. you know, you don't really see an issue. You know, this is like particle board. So like if you sneeze on it, it'll swell up a little bit. <laughs> yes. Um, but and I think we were so comfortable with that because we've actually, you know, in our rig, we've seen the particle board do that. Um, more so in the basement than anything else when some of our baggage doors were leaking. So we knew, we know what water damage looks like when it's still water damage, and we know what it looks like when it's been repaired and the wood's just now warped. warped. Yeah. Uh, so other than that, uh, I think a big thing specifically for used RVs, but new have the same problem is uh, look under your mattress as well. Mm -hmm. There is uh, a big problem in RVs of condensation buildup underneath mattresses and where there's water, there's mold. <laughs> and so you always want to uh, keep an eye on that and truck campers specifically because unlike, or I guess, or RV beds in slides, if there's nothing underneath them that's insulating, really, you have a lot more of that mm -hmm. uh, moisture and condensation. Yes. So we lifted up the mattress. It's I know, we should pain, have at least but... filmed that, but it was Jason actually yeah. like folding the mattress in half so I could get under there and look. And then while I was under there, it, everything looked good actually, but while I was under there, that's where you also, you know, you just check like where the RV meets, where the walls meet, you check under the windows again, you check, you know, you just kind of, you're, you, mm -hmm. you're literally wanting to glance at like every single corner, every single meeting point for anything suspicious, but especially water damage. So up here actually did look really good. Um, we got up in each little corner here. You check around the entire uh, sunlight. And this actually is like an emergency exit sunlight. So we opened that and we stood up in there and that was actually a great way to uh, get some eyes on the roof. Jason did go up there via the ladder and actually did like a real inspection of the seals. And when you're looking at seals, you wanna see if they're cracked. Can you peel peel it away really easily? You know, how sun damaged is it? How, when's the last time it looked like it was actually resealed? And the seals on this rig could definitely use some love, but you can tell that it was maintained seal-wise. <laughs> so, yeah. All of that to say, we did find some water damage. <laughs> <laughs> and so 
how we actually found this, and we'll show you outside as well, it's just a little loud because we're near a highway here. When you're looking at your outside of your rig, you want to look at it like, like, let's say this is the wall. No, here, I'll do it this way. This is your rig's wall. So you want to kind of just put your eyes on it so you can see any type of delamination. And so I did catch some delamination. So then Jason and I now are starting to look at it a little bit further. And you can look underneath slide outs, anywhere on the rig really. And you also wanna look for rusty screws because that'll kind of tell you that there could be some water damage. So there was some rusty screws under here. And then where there was some caulking, if you like peeled it back, you could actually see the little bit of like plywood, I guess. I'm not quite sure exactly the material, but you could see that it was dark, like mold. <laughs> so, wet. or wet, yeah, not moldy. It was definitely wet. So. When you get all that outside, you wanna check that same spot inside. So that's what we did. We came in here and it was, it's actually the slide out. Oh, one other quick thing since I'm pointing here. <laughs> you wanna check like the corners of your slides because this can be a really weak point for water as well. So you wanna just lift this up. So this is what we did. We came in here, this is all screwed down. We took off the cushions, we unscrewed it. peeling back of the wallpaper. And then when you push, it's a little soft. So this actually goes pretty much the length of this entire wall. Underneath this is actually a baggage door for more storage that you can access from the outside. So it kind of ends like right around that baggage door. But, you can see it's soft here. And then these bumps, that is sometimes, and I'm sure in this case, a sign of mold. So. It can also be uh, like water filled pieces of sawdust and other stuff that gets in there. But either way, it only looks like that after water has touched it and poofed it out. Right. So what the likely culprit of this is, is because there is this huge window that takes up the whole slide, which is a great window. It's actually not soft around the window. So we're thinking, yeah, we're just thinking that this is either fairly new or what, because so this is a consignment RV and we told the salesman, we showed him the water damage that we found. We told him, honestly, we don't know if we're up for this project. We kind of are, <laughs> but he was like, okay, all right, sure. You know, so he's got to go talk to the owner and see his thoughts about it. And so he came back and said, oh, the owner, like, no, like he, this is in pristine condition. Like there's no water damage. And so I was like, look, I'm not lying to you. <laughs> like, go touch the soft wall. So he obviously believes us because he's looking at it. So he took some pictures. He's sending them to the owner. And so we're kind of waiting to hear back. And the thing is, when you look at everything else in this rig, you can tell this owner did take care of it. Yeah. So this honestly could be a new leak because it's been sitting here on consignment that just wasn't caught. It has been or leaking. he knew about it and lied. <laughs> or he didn't know about it and it's just been leaking. Right. I mean, like, we know what to look for, those first signs. Like, <laughs> this stemmed all the way from a slight bump on the outside of the rig. Right. Like, so, eventually we would have gotten here, but still. <laughs> so what can you do in this situation? Uh, for us, we're going to be renovating. And so slicing off a piece of this interior, like, Luan wall isn't really that scary to us. And it, the, the fact that it's in the slide out is what makes me okay. If it was in the actual frame of the RV. Yeah, I, I, that would be a I don't different know. story. Yeah, like structural. This is a slide out box. I. And it's underneath the largest window in this rig. Right. So like 
it's just a very common problem with RVs, you know? Like, yeah. you get water damage under windows. Yeah. So, so we'll be able to slice that off, take a better look at it after we own it, and reassess what needs to be fixed. And if there is mold, clear it all out. Just do that whole thing. But, you know, it's a... It's a negotiation tactic. Or... Which we problem. might be getting an answer here. <laughs> all right, guys. <laughs> You're looking at the new proud owners. <laughs> this bad boy, this is a 2006 Lance 1191. I thought it was a 2005. It's a 2005 <laughs> Lance 1191. We're very excited. Um, we were able to use that water damage we found to negotiate them down. Mm -hmm. And so we're happy. Yes, and I think we'll go into more detail in a later video as to like why we're okay with that and if you're gonna accept a rig with some sort of damage like what to look for in that aspect as well yeah, and obviously like you guys know us we have we're not like we're handy now i would say that but like we're handy now wow that's very true very true are. statement yeah we would not have bought this if we saw this five years ago and if you're looking for rvs and you find water damage and you're not handy right and you don't know someone who can fix it then just pass on it there are plenty of other rvs right in. or if you're just not even up for the project you know yeah, like true. we're we're up for that and we want we you know we're doing a full-blown renovation so to be honest like a little bit more <laughs> work <laughs> yeah we're fine with it yeah you guys will see the work that we get done and yes. see if it's something that you would want to handle yes so, so I also <laughs> we'll let you know later if this was a good idea or a bad idea <laughs> yeah exactly Jason uh quickly booked us a campground through Thousand Trails yep yeah, they just opened a day ago so we kind of lucked out perfect um and we are getting ready to hitch up we yeah. also I don't I don't know I feel like that's a whole another video where we can tell you what we had to do to the truck to get it ready for a truck camper absolutely it wasn't as much as I thought thank goodness right. but trucks don't come like equipped you can't just go buy a truck take it to a dealership and load up a truck camper like there are some things you need to do beforehand so we definitely want to talk about that kind of stuff too because this is even though we feel experienced in RVing this is a totally new learning experience for us and we're really really excited to take you guys on this next step of our journey What do you smell? Tell us. Do you like it? Do you like it? We need your approval. Oh <laughs> we my need goodness. It. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh-huh. What do you think? <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, oh, I think she says yes. Camping approved. <laughs> Carmen camping approved. Woo! Oh, that's okay. good. That's, that's the most important part, you know? That's a load off. <laughs> All right. So, on our way here, huge perks already. Yeah. Uh, we stopped and picked up pizza. We stopped and picked up beer. And... <laughs> 
we missed our turn twice and had to make a Yui and uh, no big deal. No big deal. No big deal. I think we're gonna like uh, this mode of travel for what we're looking for right now. Well, all right. I think <laughs> as there's like much more exploring we could do and vlogging, but yep. I think what's important for tonight is ooh, we got a bed cover. <laughs> we brought our own sheets, our own pillows. We're probably just gonna like throw that in the trash. And we're ready yep. to disinfect. This isn't actually a dirty camper at all. No. So it, that's really nice. It, it's just not ours. You know, yes. so like you're okay Mentally. with your dirt, but like <laughs> someone else's, it kind of like skeeves you out. Yes. So, so we have a little bit of cleaning, a yes. little bit of beers to drink, a little bit of pizza to eat. Uh, lots of drawers to open and look in again and kind of just figure <laughs> it out and just kind of start making this camper ours. We will do a full walkthrough oh, of yes. this camper before and then uh, obviously take you through our entire renovation of it. Uh, I think we're already getting gears turning and ideas coming yeah. up. So uh, that being said, we're gonna eat this pizza and then figure out how to do the hookups, but that's it <laughs> for you today. All right, are you excited? <laughs> I'm Jason. <laughs> we don't do that anymore. I don't, I don't think been, we've done that yes. for like three years. <laughs> years. But anyway, before we go into that, um, yeah, I feel like, oh darn, there's something else I wanted to say, but I can't remember. Anyway, we just- A little bit rusty. Yeah, we're a little rusty with the whole vlogging thing. <laughs> I don't Doesn't know what that, that look good? is for. <laughs> Which is? A yes. little bit more faster pace, uh, laissez-faire. Laissez-faire. <laughs> <laughs>